Jeez, you're round tight already. <sighs> Come on, it's time. You were rolling around all over the bed last night. Bad dreams? <sighs> Isn't your senior management meeting today? Yes. <sighs> today. <sighs> today, I, Stuart Wright, will finally be named king. Here's another letter from your father. Hmm. You want to read it? File it. Okay. But I don't think he's gonna stop. Good morning, Miss Thomas. Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright, your driver is here. Miss Thomas, will you require a cab? Yes. Take my driver. I'll cab it. <laughs> Thanks, but the limo has been provided for the new king. And I don't think there is a queen. Sweetheart, will you marry me? It depends on the size of the kingdom. I think you're gonna need a bigger kingdom. Wall Street will be pleased with our projected earnings over the upcoming fiscal year. Any questions or concerns from anyone? Yeah, everything looks great on paper. I'm just wondering what's driving these numbers. Money! <laughs> but how about a reality check? We have never accomplished this kind of profit at this company. And that was in a good advertising economy. Is there some master plan I don't know about? David, we've worked together for over 15 years, and I've often sought your counsel, but not today. Stuart, why don't you share your plan to achieve these profits? We can achieve these profits. The question is who has the commitment to do what is needed. The profits can easily be generated by decreasing our expenses and downsizing. At my television station across town, I've already begun the process, and our profits have drastically increased. Now I see. We're being instructed to eliminate about a third of our workforce at every station across the country. How long do you all think that our staff, our employees, can handle that added workload? long enough to impact our bonuses. <laughs> Downsizing happens every day. Besides, there's always somebody out there willing to work for less. Oh yeah, there is. And how much less will we accept from them? Our official corporate goal is clear. Increase profits immediately. Your mission is very simple. Achieve the profit goal, period. And it's something that you are paid very well to do. And Stuart has given you a plan to achieve that goal. Implement the plan. No excuses. So, let's see. You know this plan, your plan, 
It's going to hurt this company and a lot of good employees. David, you know they're setting this company up to be sold in the next 12 to 18 months. The higher the profits, the higher the sale price, the higher our bonuses. Someone's going to get rich on this deal. Why not us? You and me. So we fire a few people. It's a tough world, David. If they're any good, they'll find a job somewhere else. My conscience is clear. Oh, Don't confuse absence for clarity, Stuart. Mr. Wright, Mr. Wright, I have an urgent call for you. Mr. Wright, I have an urgent call for you. Take a message, please. Mr. Wright, you really want to take this call. Not now. It's your dad. Take a message. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Dad. Thomas Stu. How? Yeah, I'm still here. I love you. I love you. Now, I can't get back tonight. I'm extremely busy right now. I'll call Cynthia. We'll try to get down tomorrow. Yeah, I love you too, Mom. Cynthia. It's me. I'm in the middle of something. Make it quick. I just got off the phone with Mom. And what did Mommy say? My father had a massive heart attack this morning. We have to go back for the funeral. When? I mean, I'm sorry. I can't just take off right now. I have to finish plans for Fashion Week. Besides, how long has it been? Seven years. Seven years. Look, I need your support. And I really need you to come with me. Okay, but I can only be in Hickville for one day. I can't get stuck down there. Thanks, babe. I love you. You better. I really don't have time for this right now. I'm doing this for you. Now I gotta go. I'm on a deadline that just got tighter. You want me to order dinner? Yes, and maybe breakfast. I'm gonna have to pull an all-nighter so I can go to a funeral tomorrow. You can't take it back. You can't take it with you. That bell has tolled. But child, I'm with you. Daddy touched a lot of people's lives. We'll yes. all miss him. Cynthia, this is Bob. Uh, 
Bob Vaughn. He's a friend of the family. You know, I was just telling Lisa Purcell, where'd she go? Anyway, I was telling Lisa Purcell about the day Stu was born. His daddy was so proud of him, he didn't have a hair on his head. He was ugly. <laughs> Glad you wasn't no girl, baby. <laughs> anyway, remember when we sailed your daddy's boat down to the Bahamas? What a trip that was. A gale caught us and turned an eight-day passage into a 15-day adventure on the high seas. I want to tell you, that storm just about took us past the islands. <laughs> it still wouldn't have taken us that long if it hadn't taken two days for our uh, navigator here to uh, realize that we were sailing in the wrong direction. <laughs> Stuart was a navigator? You bet your bottom job he was. He didn't tell me he knew how to sail. Wasn't a big deal. Point the boat east and sail. If you hit Africa for some reason, you went too far. That's right, we were heading down to Africa. The stew here figured that we were going in the wrong direction, so he turned the boat around. <laughs> There's Lisa Purcell. Hey, Stu, you think your daddy figured that you were off course all along? Of course he did. He wanted you to learn on your own. He wanted you to find and choose the right way. <laughs> he was patient, though. He was the most patient man I'd ever seen. He was willing for us to sail all the way to Africa just so you could learn. <laughs> he just laid back quietly until you finally asked for some help. <laughs> Bob, thank you for coming. You've always been such a wonderful friend. You can always count me. I know. I'm sorry about the separate quarters, but we're not married. Mom's house, mom's rules. Let's not make it an issue tonight, all right? Cynthia? I told you we should have stayed at a hotel. No, this is ridiculous. We are grown adults. If we want to sleep together, it isn't mommy's business. It's okay, babe. No, it's not okay. Did you see the food they served at the wake? Fried chicken. Fried steak, fried shrimp, fried rice, fried beans, fried okra, fried onions, french fries, fried everything. You know, I think they even tried to fry the salad. Ugh. It's no wonder this town is suffering from foogly. Fat and oogly. Oh, my arteries are clogging just thinking about it. It's just weird being back. Good night. At least we're going home tomorrow. Getting back to work is the best thing for you right now. figured that you were off course all along. Of course he did. He wanted you to learn on your own. He wanted you to find and choose the right way. Good morning, baby. Good morning. I poured you some coffee. Thank you. Oh. It's good to have you home. Thanks, Mom. It's so nice to be home. But I can't stay too long. I need to be heading back to New York. I understand. But I want you to see this. Look at you. You were so cute. <laughs> That's you. Jimmy Bessie. And Jamie Clark. <laughs> Can you believe it, how time flies? Mm. Jamie's a lawyer now in Nashville. I don't know where Jimmy is these days. I can barely hold that bat. Much less swing it. 
Your dad enjoyed coaching you. I did love him. And he loved you. He loved you very much. Hmm. He always loved you. Always. No, Mom. Not after what I did. Dad, you don't get it. In today's economy, you have to move fast. What about diligence? You do business, Dad, as if the world were flat. I've seen with my own eyes too many people become servants to their lenders. And I want more than that for you. I love you. Then why don't you give me the money? Give me the money. Everything I have will be yours one day. I don't want to live like you. Life to me isn't this dress rehearsal. I want to live my life a rich man. The one who pursues righteousness finds life, prosperity, and love. The world has changed, Dad. Not as much as you think. Please let me have the money now. Don't make me miss this opportunity, Dad. Do you think I'm holding you back? Yeah, you always have. You've always held me back with this archaic fence of rules. If you're consumed by wealth, son, you'll never have enough. Oh, but Dad, I'll eat the best meals. I'll drink the finest wines. I'll drive the fastest cars. And I'll date the most beautiful women. That's, that's like chasing the wind. Chasing the wind. Chasing the wind. Okay, so you've set your heart on this. I'll sign for you. No, Stuart. I spent every last penny, Mom. Yeah, he loved you, Stuart. He loved you more than money. He didn't care about the money. He loved you. He cared about the money, Mom. He cared about the money. Stuart, no. No. Stuart, he never stopped loving you. Didn't you get his letters? I failed him, Mom. How could I face him? Your father forgave you a long time ago, Stuart. Long time ago. I want to believe that, Mom. I really do. But I can't. Stuart, there is nothing you could do to separate you from your father's love. You know that. probably talk about that. Why? We are leaving. I was thinking about staying around for a few days. Help mom get settled. Then, how about if you and I head down to the Bahamas for a couple of days? <laughs> Could use some time to get my mind off everything. Look, I know you're going through a difficult time right now. But running off to some mosquito-infested island is not going to help. We need to get back to work. Get your mind busy. We'll charter a sailboat. Anchor in a remote lagoon, just you, me, and nature for a week. I'll even bring my old guitar. I'll serenade <laughs> you to sleep every night. Stuart, I am a fine dining theater city woman. You know that. I wouldn't be comfortable without the constant chaos, noise, the threat of being mugged. It would mean a lot to me. Like, even if I wanted to, and I don't, I can't go. Fashion week is right around the corner, and I have to get back to work. Take care of your mom. Thanks, babe.
baby. I don't know why God chooses to do what he does, but I do know his ways are better than our ways. I'm not sure I believe that, Mom. Doesn't make it untrue. I think I'm gonna head back to the Bahamas for a few days. Back to where Dad and I used to go sailing. I hope you find everything you're looking for and more than you expect. I love you, baby. I love you too, Mom. Can I get you anything to drink? Rum with Coke, please. Have another one, please. All right. Thank you. The ripe of the fruit, the more the temptation. Oh, yeah, yeah. The red of the wine, the less you remember tasting. That's right. My friend, raise your glass. May the sweet life last longer than days you'll be regretting. Good afternoon, Mr. Wright. What is your purpose for coming? We're looking for answers. Vacation. Anything to declare? Yep. I'm drunk. <laughs> well, you'll be needing a ride then. Where's B? Yeah, man. Could you please take Mr. Wright too? Mr. Wright, where are you going? Here. Let's go there. Ah, the sign of the fish. We know it well. Wesby will get you there. Mr. Wright, it is not wise to come to a foreign country drunk. This is a beautiful place, but there are people who will harm you here. Be careful. Come. This ain't no cab. Don't worry about it. What's happened, man? That thing have brakes? Beautiful place, but there are people who will harm you here. Those are not the happy guys on the brochure. I was sure, you were sure, but I don't know. You don't know. I was sure, you were sure, I don't know. I don't know now. I was sure. Oh God, I'm dead. Aren't you going to charge him? Gasper! 
Okay. It's a room across the street, room three. There's a safe and a room for your valuables. What you need a credit card? You're gonna steal the room. Whenever Jasper ready, he'll find you, man. Enjoy the island. Wait, wait! How much do I? Oh yeah. What am I doing here? Do it right. Uh, Jordan. <laughs> you from the States? Is that obvious, huh? Small island. You place to stand out. So you live here? Yes. Wow. I imagine from time to time you get a little island crazy. No. There's plenty to do. How about if you show me around or something? Jordan! Jasper calls. You'll meet you at the fish in five. Thanks, Jimmy. It's nice meeting you. Enjoy the island. You always <clears throat> play by yourself in the dark? I'll wager a pint. You can't hit from there. I'm going home. Take care, my American friend. You take care, you drunk pirate.
How's your head? Mm. <laughs> no blood. That's always good. Who are you? Oh, Jasper. Jasper Rogers. Did I throw up on your shoes? Look out, Abe! Oh. Oh. <laughs> ah, you spattered them a little. But don't worry about it. We all have our moments. The law. So the tank you go. You ought to let me take this guy home and save the taxpayers some money. He can sleep it off in my place. No. Come on, eh? He could be dangerous. Hey, this guy. <laughs> the law was about to arrest me. And you saved me. Why did you save a drunk man? We threw up on your shoes. <laughs> Just trying to love my neighbor as myself. I ain't your neighbor, buddy. Well, when you hurled on my feet, she became acquainted. <laughs> oh, God. Just kill me now. Hung over, lost. What the Jesus freak. Oh, this is hell. Well, my drunk friend, life is about choices. And you have a very important one to make right now. You can either go back to last night, or you can start anew. The choice is yours. Now I've got to get up front and mind the store. You can stay as long as you want. Just outside is some great swimming. If you need anything, come on up front. Hey. Yeah? Where am I? Oh, you're at the sign of the fish. So you're feeling down and desperate With control and comfort slipped away And you have to check To see if you're still breathing Cause where there is hope There is healing On and on and on we pray One more, one more can be So you play? Yeah, I, uh, well, I used to. Here, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get in your stuff. Oh, play away. I haven't touched that thing in years. <laughs> it's amazing how quickly you can pick it back up. Gifts never leave us, no matter how hard we try to lose them. 
I came back to thank you. I didn't handle myself properly this morning, and I apologize. No worries. But tell me something. What is your name? Wow. I took Rude to a whole nother level this morning. I'm Stuart Wright. Stuart, pleasure to finally make your acquaintance. You know, Luther is not a well-known tourist trap. Now, people, when they come here, they're trying to get away from something. Most people are running from something. So tell me, Stuart, uh, are you running from something? Many years ago, my father and I quit speaking. I was waiting for him to blink to break the silence. He died before I blinked. I guess I won. Do you think your father loved you? Nope. Not in the end. Did he tell you that? No, he never told me. Years back, I lost a lot of his money. Almost everything he'd ever made. I could never repay him. Ouch. So, when was it that he stopped talking to you? He did. I guess he did. He never did. It was me. I did it. I chose not to talk to him anymore. How was I going to face him? <sighs> Dad would have liked you. You're old school, just like he was. Old school. Yeah, old school. God stuff on the wall. Inspirational quotes. I imagine he'd have probably even worn that hat that you wear. Ah. I can tell he was a wise man. Listen, I got a fresh pot of coffee on on the inside. Why don't we go inside and have a cup and we can talk some more. Come on. When I was a kid, Dad used to yell out playfully, Stuby, what's the secret to life? I'd look up at him, smile, and say, love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. But, That's not the way this world works, Jasper. Ah, uh, true. That's true. The world's tough, man. You gotta take care of number one. Screw your neighbors before they screw you. 
It's only a matter of time before your neighbors will try and screw you. You know, Stuart, maybe that's the reason that Jesus said the kingdom of God is not of this world. And look what it got him. No house, no property, no position of authority, no hot wife, and the man died for doing things that were nice. He died on that cross, like he said he would. Three days, three days later, he rose from that grave, just like he said he would. A lot of people don't believe that. Just because they don't believe it, that don't make it not true. So what difference does it make? My friend, it's the difference between catching the wind and chasing it. You see, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, hung on that cross for all the sins of this world. I'm just not following you. <sighs> Don't you see? Sin doesn't hurt God, but God hates that sin because it kills his children. It's killing you, Stuart. We're all gonna die, Jasper. <laughs> Stuart, that's not what God desires. You know, Stuart, God loves you. Loves all of us. Very, very much. Jesus, the Messiah, showed us what that love was. It's life joy and peace, all those who believe in him. Believe. Believe. All who believe in Jesus will receive the gift of eternal life. That's simple. If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. And you know, he turns no one away. All those who call on the name of the Lord, they will be saved. But you know the sad part? Is that so many of us are gonna choose not to make that call. Mom and dad, they believe that. <clears throat> Well, my friend, the question is, what do you believe? I believe mm -hmm. that I've been sitting here too long. <laughs> and I believe that I'm hungry. <sighs> all this time and all you're thinking about is your stomach. <laughs> you got the best fried grouper and kong fritters on the island. Hello, gorgeous. Hi. I want you to meet, uh... Stuart Wright. Stu. Call me Stu. <laughs> so you've met? Last night at the sports bar. Before everything went south. Oh, excuse me, before everything is well done tonight. <laughs> Sorry to hear about your father. How'd you know about that? Coconut Telegraph. Coconut Telegraph. It's a small island. I didn't know Jasper was a gossip. Not Jasper. 
There he is, my American. A round of your finest port, my good man. Port? <laughs> we don't have any port here, man. Incredulous. Nothing to fear. Ladies. I've got just what you need, mate. He who hesitates is lost. Good night, William. Good night, Stuart. I know what ails my American friend. I can fix it. It's a short life. 24 hours, maybe 60 good years. It's a short stay. Like the song says, you can laugh with the sinners or cry with the saints, but sinners are much more fun. Cynthia, who loves you, baby? I used to think Stuart Wright did, but he ran away to the islands. He's fish bait by now. Where are you? I called your cell phone all last night and today. Are you drunk? No, babe. My phone is getting a reception. I'm on uh, this place called Eleuthera. It's beautiful right now. It's gorgeous. Come should, on. Uh, come on. St Stuart, let's go. It's cold. You I'm should come down for a few days. It'd be good for us to hang out down here. I'm busy. And I don't like bugs. There's no bugs. It's overrated. There's no bugs. I'll rub lotion over every square inch of your body. It's all right. Just come down. <laughs> I'm going to have to pass. When are you coming home? We have theater tickets for Friday. Do I need to get a stand-in? No, Friday. What's today? I'll get a stand-in. Call me when you're ready to come home. Babe. Makes the color of the ocean appear so dazzling blue. Some say the light vibrates and scatters all else from our view. All I know it's to come aboard? Why not? She was a beautiful boat in her day. It was. And it can be again. I don't know. It looks like a lot of work. Worth the work. If not ignored, this boat could take a person anywhere. Who owns it? It was abandoned after the last storm. I salvaged it. Beauty and a boat builder. Wow, that's something you acquired growing up here on the island? I didn't grow up here. Been here about six years. Really? What brings you here? Or, to borrow from our mutual friend Jasper, what are you running from, my dear? <laughs> Jasper brought me here. Wow, guess the, uh, Drastic age difference threw me off on that one. No. <laughs> Jasper and I are not a couple. He's a dad I never had. God used him to save my life. Really? I grew up in a very dysfunctional home. Most people just, just called us trash. On my 18th birthday, my mom dropped me off in the parking lot of a strip club. She told me to go to work. She said it was my best and highest purpose. Wow. 
So then I guess St. Jasper saved you from being a stripper. No, it was his club. <laughs> guess she didn't know about Jasper's strip clubs. <laughs> Jasper owned a bunch of clubs. I walked in the day he closed them. I'm sorry. I've taken advantage of you, your desire to be loved, your need for money, the pain that you suffered, all so that I could profit. Jasper closed the clubs that day, sold all the property, moved down here. He made an offer to all the girls, quit stripping, and he would give them a $20,000 scholarship to any school they chose. Some took it, others are still stripping. I took both offers. Both offers? God's forgiveness and Jasper's offer out of stripping. I'm happy for you. What do you believe, Stuart? I believe you can never be too rich, too thin, or too beautiful. What do you believe? I believe in God and that his love never fails. That's the sweetest thing I ever heard. Deep truth from a would-be stripper. I'm not the one missing my pants. <laughs> I hope you find everything you're looking for. Hi, I'm Stu. This is a song I wrote for my father. Seven years I've been drifting Like the voyage we sailed when I lost our position off the charts into a storm Still you patiently let me find my way home And now something, something you once said Keeps growing Of all your seafaring tales Though the winds of grace are always blowing Gotta raise your sails I know you're right there sailing now And I know your course is true So hear my song on fair winds across the ocean blue I would navigate the angry capes and hold my course straight through if I could just have one more day there's still three words I say if I could 
could just have one more day with you. I thought I'd find you here. Should help you wake up in the morning. Why? Why did he have to die right now? The righteous perish. Devout people die every day. And the world just doesn't understand that when good people die, they're spared the evils of this world. Your faith helps you. It helps mom. It even helped dad. But it doesn't help me. I see people with faith and without faith. And they're all suffering. They're all having problems in this world. And eventually, they're all gonna die. You know, my young friend, you need a walkabout. A walkabout? A walkabout. Come on. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Oh, I found an ocean blue In my house, my living room Ride the whales in my canoe Ahead, a short complete taste the sandy, salty, sweet paradise on an empty street, and you know that it saved me. Well, the sun shines brightly on my knees, moving slowly through the tree, the songs of the man. What is this place? Some call it the glass window, but it is the answer to your question. You see, Stuart, faith in God does not mean that we will not have problems in this world. In fact, God tells us while we're in this world, we will have problems. Take the trade winds. They really represent the problems of this world. All the pain, hatred, disease, envy, murder, and even death. And the Atlantic Ocean here, that represents those who do not believe that Jesus Christ was who we said he was, the Son of God. And they never know a true peace. They're always reacting to the turmoil of the world. Crisis to crisis, always stirring up strife. Never knowing true peace.
coral is the living rock. The coral rock represents Jesus Christ. It's never overwhelmed by the wind and the water, the troubles of this world. Jesus Christ, the coral rock, shelters from the wind and the water. It shelters the water behind it. Let me show you something over here. See that water there? That's the Caribbean. That represents those who believe that Jesus Christ is who he said he is. The Son of God. They believe in him. Both sides are subjected to this fierce wind and water. But one side gives in to the chaos and the turmoil. The other side remains calm and at peace. Same winds, different reactions. Let me ask you, Stuart, how do you react to the wind? All those who call the name of the Lord, they will be saved. Stuart. It is so good to have you back. I've missed you so much. Look, I've been doing some reading, and the best thing for you is to get back to work. Welcome back. Sorry to hear about your father. You doing okay? I'm all right. Got a second? Sure. <sighs> I really appreciate everything that you've done for me over the years. I know you don't like my new business plan for the company, but David, a big payday is coming. Less than two years. What's your point, Stuart? The point is, is that you can't stop this plan. You can't stop the sale of this company. And if you keep up what you're doing, you could get fired. David, for your own good, just keep quiet. Just shut up about the whole thing. Play along with it. Stuart, why are you telling me this? Let's get straight to it. I'm very pleased with the way that you handled the first part of the plan. And now, I want you to introduce phase two of the plan. What I'm about to tell you is extremely confidential. Uh, for competitive reasons, it must be so. I understand. The name of the plan is Cover Two. Cover Two? As you know, our television stations across the country broadcast a lot of football games. We get our highest advertising rates for those games. They generate a lot of money for our company. 
Exactly. And we just get to sell half the commercials. The network gets to sell the other half. That's right. Well, what if each of our stations were able to sell two additional commercials per half per game? Millions of new dollars. Over a season, 35, 40 million dollars in new revenue. I estimated between 50 and 55 million. How do we sell the extra commercials? That's cover too. You order our television stations to immediately start selling the additional commercials. And when we start broadcasting the games, we'll replace just two of the network commercials with our commercials. The network execs will never even notice. What if they notice? Noise and wind. Oh, they'll yell at us and kick up the dust and posture. And then we'll say, Poof. send out a memo and tell our stations to stop the practice. And in the end, it all goes away. Because the networks need our television stations. And we need their football games. What's my role? As far as I'm concerned, it's your plan. You own it. You get all of the credit, glory, and the rewards. For every $10 million of new business we get, you get a $250,000 bonus, paid quarterly. Thank you, Mr. O'Neill. I think you better get a good tax attorney to help manage that new wealth of yours. And Stuart, confidentiality is everything. Did you, uh, you hear about David? Fool resigned this morning. Said he couldn't implement a plan that that he thought was morally wrong. What a fool. Well, I hope he can live with his morals. What are you doing? Packing. Why'd you resign? <laughs> sure, you know I can't keep my mouth shut. This plan they're implementing, it doesn't benefit the company, the employees, anybody. The only ones who are getting helped by this, the ones causing pain. Through cutbacks, greedy decisions. We're not doing anything illegal, David. Stuart, I never said it was illegal. I said it wasn't right. By resigning, you're not changing anything, man. The cutbacks and sale, they're all gonna continue. The big payday is gonna come with or without you, David. You know what, Stuart? Too long I've put up with it. I've just sat by, said, compromise is fine, no big deal. Take that wide, easy road. The ends justify the means. But you know what? I'm not gonna do that anymore. Now I'm gonna take that narrow road where at least I know that right is still right and wrong is wrong. Stuart, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give away. I'm choosing to make a life. New Testament? Jesus? No. Churchill. It's not work today, I was thinking. Why don't we get married? Are you serious? I'm serious. Let's elope. <laughs> Stuart. 
Stewart. <laughs> I love you, but I don't like marriage. My mother was married five times. I know all about marriage, and it's just not for me. I just think we need a little something a little more serious. Well, it's not a marriage license. No, something else. Something bigger. I love you, but I don't want our relationship to end with moms. It won't. It'll be better. Uh, that's what she said about number three. <laughs> oh, hi. <gasps> to the future, this is right. Did you have a good day today? Yeah. I was busy. Not you. It was good. Stu, have you seen the size of this new hurricane? Hurricane Cynthia. <laughs> you know you've made it when they name a hurricane after you. <laughs> I'm serious. It's huge. They say it makes the one that destroyed New Orleans look like an afternoon shower. Really? Where is it? Still offshore. They predict it's gonna hit the Bahamas and the Carolinas. Manhattan will get gusty winds and rains. Aren't you glad I was smart enough to plan an indoor reception? The hurricane's gonna hit the Bahamas. That's what they predict. But our wedding will go off without a problem. No one will forget our reception. You have spared no expense. No expense? None. Stuart. Cynthia. What? What are your sources? No. I don't have any comments. What's wrong? When did you find out about the fraud? Just a few hours ago, the FCC notified me. How long, there, how long has it been going on? Apparently for months. How did it happen? Well, apparently we have a renegade executive. Well, Mr. O'Neill, what do you want to understand? This is, this is not only illegal, this undermines the, the foundation of trust that is so fundamental to our industry. So this, was an, so this was an organized plan? Oh, yeah. I mean, it even had a, a name for it. Called it um, Cover Two. Like the football player. Who is he? His name is Stuart Wright. Now, we are cooperating with the FCC fully throughout this investigation. And Mr. Wright's employment here has been terminated. And I understand that the government has frozen his assets until the investigation is determined. How does something like this happen? I, I should have paid more attention to the day-by-day -day operations of our company. I am guilty of trusting Stuart Wright. He fooled me. I apologize for trusting this man. How can we find Wright? You know, one good thing that's happened from this thing is I have learned the difference between right and wrong. Don't answer it. It's David. And we are starting a new program immediately. It's called Get right. He used the old standbys. Greed and power and money. What are his options? 
Don't talk to anyone. If the FCC or the police try to call you or contact you, just tell them you want to cooperate fully. Can they really freeze all of his assets? Apparently, yes. Things are going to get really tough. So why are you trying to help me? Stuart. You're worth it. I'm going to call you the best attorney, then I'll call you back tomorrow morning. We'll talk about it, all right? And for what it's worth, I know this one act doesn't define you. I didn't sign up for this. Lift your feet, please. You all right, Bo? I'm great. My dad's dead. My fiance left me. I have no money. I have no friends. And I just lost my job. I'm freaking great. How are you today? I'm sorry to hear that, Bo. But God will get you through it, man. He will. I don't believe that. That don't make it not true, man. God is real. And he's in charge. I mean, he is who he is, Bo. Listen, Bo. You don't have anything that I need. I got two things you need. What's that? One, I have faith in God. And what else? I got a job, Bo.
I see you find my sign. Good to see you again, my friend. Yeah. But this hurricane, what are you going to do? Ah, I'm going to do hurricane relief. What? Hurricane relief? You've lost everything. How are you going to do hurricane relief? Not everything. Just a business. Same wind, different reaction. Mr. Stewart, I hear you're becoming quite the celebrity. Everybody down here is talking about it. You heard about what happened? Yeah. How did you hear about what happened all the way down here? Ah, uh, your buddy William. <laughs> <laughs> that drunk pirate. Oh, yeah. Let me ask you something, Stuart. Have you found out what it is you're running from yet? Jasper, I got a lot of problems, all of which I've come because of my selfishness. And now, I'm suffering the consequences. <laughs> For the first time in my life, the question isn't what am I running from. The question is who am I running to? I'm running to that fellow who loaned you that hat. <laughs> You know, Stuart, God may not change the circumstances that you've gotten yourself into, but one thing he will do, he will change you so you can get through that circumstance. That I know. And that, I believe. Son, if you lose your way, find heaven star. Oh, God.